the folly of a Palestinian state. And for a long time I thought Israeli prime ministers know better than we do for sure what Israel needs, and so whatever they say we should support. But the more I pay attention to the world and the news, the more I realize that even the prime minister of Israel don't always know what's best for Israel. And that the idea that there would someday be a Palestinian state is so scary for the world and for Israel, for Jews everywhere, that it just simply cannot ever be allowed to come into being. Unfortunately, because of the world the way it is, being uh, governed and bribed and uh, PC'd to death by uh, the uh, 63 Muslim nations, the 21 Arab nations, all the uh, Europeans that are going to roll over and be destroyed by Islamic extremism. It's probably going to be, but it shouldn't be. And here are the reasons why. Number one, Jews pulled out of Lebanon, Jews pulled out of Gaza. There's no settlement in any of those places. And they're completely Juden Rhine. And the dangers to Israel are coming from Lebanon and Gaza. Missiles and the dangers. So what makes anybody think that if the Jews pull out of West Bank that there won't be a serious threat? They have not demonstrated that they can live in peace without Israeli troops in the middle of them, of the Palestinians and the Arabs. And so why in the world should Israel do anything to commit suicide like that? Uh, if you look at a map and you realize that if the uh, Israelis were not in control of Judea and Samaria, that some parts of the country would be nine miles wide. <laughs> nine miles! It's like... From where I live to downtown Chicago, that's a farther distance than that. Number two, there's no such thing as a Palestinian people. You go find any document, any time in human history, until the 1930s or 40s, was there a Palestinian people? No, the Palestinians were all Jews. It's just a made-up people. They are part of the Arab world. Before that, they all stressed how they were all part of the Arab world. So why would they deserve their own country, a 22nd Arab country? Three, the Palestinians don't want a state on their own. They want the whole thing. The Palestine Liberation Organization, the PLO, they were founded in 1964. Now, what was the state of affairs in 1964? Did Jews control Judea and Samaria? No. No, they didn't. So it was clear. What were they trying to liberate the PLO? They were trying to liberate the whole thing. And if you look at a map produced by the Palestinian Territories and Authority, there's no Israel on there. They've never said for one minute they're willing to live with a Jewish state. The Palestinians don't want to have an independent Jewish state, so why should there be an independent Palestinian state? They completely continue to incite and the Israel is anti, for anti-Semitism to continue to incite against Israel. Their curriculum does that. The polls indicate that a significant percentage of the Palestinians want violence against Israel. And you think about the fact that from 1948 to 1967, from the founding of Israel until 1967, who was in control of the West Bank? The Jordanians. If the Arab world wanted a Palestinian state, they could have made one in one minute during those years. It's clear that they don't want one. Four, you can make a deal with any Palestinian leadership. First of all, Hamas in Gaza, control of Gaza, says that they want Israel destroyed. So how are you going to make a deal with that includes them? And then Abu Mazen and, who, and Fayyad and whoever else is in charge of the Palestinians today in the West Bank, who knows if they'll be in charge tomorrow? A, a document, an agreement wouldn't be worth the paper it was written on. Five, there's never going to be a deal. And they don't even want a deal. They're just going through the motions to try and convince the world to give them more concessions. Every time they sit there and talk, the world forces Israel to give more and more concessions. That's what they're doing here. You think that the Palestinians are ever going to sign a document that doesn't include allowing three or four million Arabs who never lived in Israel to go to Israel and take over Israel? They're never going to sign a document. So the whole thing is foolishness. Six, it's a danger for the whole world. You think another terrorist state in the Middle East is a good thing for the world? Uh, Iran already controls Hamas in Gaza. They would eventually control whatever uh, government takes over in the West Bank. So that the world needs another one. And Jordan doesn't want one. They may mouth the words that they want a Palestinian state, but they don't want one because two-thirds or more of the population of Jordan are Palestinian descent. Uh, and the, they, the last thing they want is a, a Palestinian nation on their border with a military that could hurt Amman as much as it could hurt Jerusalem. So the Jordanians really don't want it. Uh, seven, Israel underlines, undermines its own legitimacy when it talks about how uh, it agrees to the stupid freeze on uh, housing units in uh, Judea and Samaria. It's basically agreeing with the world that Jews have no right to live in the homeland where our ancestors walked for thousands of years. Uh, when it says the Jews have no right to live there, what right do the, then do the, do the Jews have a right to say that 
Now they have the right to live anywhere in Israel. They're giving they're giving credence to this legitimate, uh, this illegitimate, ridiculous attitude of uh, people like uh, Helen Thomas, who says Jews should go back to Poland. That land was given to the Jews four thousand years ago by the by history by the Bible. Jews have lived there continuously. They only Jews only left when they were forced to. They've dreamed about Israel from the beginning. They've walked all through Israel, including Judea and Samaria, uh, and so they undermine their own legitimacy when they don't when they agree to these stupid freezes. And the freeze is so dumb. I mean, this is a tricky thing where Obama tries to bribe Israel with fighter jets to be delivered many years from now on the condition that a final settlement is reached and Israel went for it, just complete stupidity. And so these are just some of the reasons why Israel should never agree to a Palestinian state. Can you imagine uh, that two miles from Ben Gurion Airport or five miles from Ben Gurion Airport, you'd have terrorists with missile launchers going for LL flights that they'd have, and, and they're never going to, you know, the, the UN said that you couldn't bring missiles into Lebanon, and now there's forty to 60,000 missiles in Lebanon. The, there's no agreement that the Arabs would ever abide by that would be worth the paper it's written on. So how could there ever be a Palestinian state that Israel assents to? And so what is the solution? Well, first of all, if the government would permit people in their own natural way to move to Judea and Samaria, which is clearly part of the integral land of Israel, there'd be 500,000 to a million Jews there right now, just by natural growth and by people wanting to live there. And what do you do with the Arabs who live there? Say that they can live there, but that they should have a confederation with Jordan, which is their natural nation. They don't have to move to Jordan, but they'll be associated with Jordan. That'll be their national citizenship. You know, there's a de facto peace already between the villages. There certainly was before the horrible mistake of Oslo and those agreements. Villages live nicely next to each other, and they can continue to do so inside the sovereign state of Israel. Um, and so that would be a clear solution, because if you say that the Jews ha cannot live in the West Bank and cannot build homes in the West Bank, you're saying that you're, you're making an anti-Semitic statement about being something being Jude and Ryan. Jews can live any place in America. We take the whole the whole country takes offense when you say that Jews or blacks or whatever can't live in a certain neighborhood, and so the Jewish people are going to allow some foreign entity to say that Jews have no right to live in Judea and Samaria, where Jews have always lived. And so when Omar started talking about a two-state solution, and Netanyahu has picked up a two-state solution, and Livni, they should pay attention to the hundreds of thousands of uh, Jews who live in Judea and Samaria who understand the strategic significance of that land that Israel cannot allow itself to be nine miles wide, that that land should never be Jude and Ryan. Jews have always lived there, and they can continue to live there, and there should never be a Palestinian state.